So uh, here is a giant Wasatch front muley that my good friend and hunting partner Billy Spears killed uh, last night and brought in this morning. I'm I'm like just got back from Alaska and now Billy's on camera and I'm gonna give him crap because I found this deer this summer. I watched him all summer and I go to Alaska and Billy freaking kills him. <laughs> but hey, you know what? Uh, I've I've definitely gotten Billy's help before in killing deer, so I'm happy to return the favor. Uh, what a freaking stud deer. The mass on this thing is amazing. Amazing. So, hey, I'm going to show how to cape today. Um, you know, obviously having your taxidermist do it is great. Um, and, and, you know, I, I highly recommend. Taxidermists are way better at this than I am. They're super fast. Uh, I do know how to do it. I do a really clean job. At the end of the day, it's every bit as good as what the taxidermist will do. It just takes me a little bit longer. But I think I have some good tricks for beginners that I still use some of them. And I'm going to show them like how I was taught so that you sure you're sure not to make any mistakes like to cut things too shallow um but i you know we may we may uh well i mean maybe i'll just run this thing the whole time it's probably going to take me 20 minutes to do this so get ready for a 20 minute video but at the end you will know how to cape your own deer which is super cool so the first thing you want to do is you want to cut up the spine of the animal just cut a line all the way to the midway point between the antlers, right here. Come show this, Billy. The midway point between the antlers. Billy did this in the field. And so now we're gonna take it from here, okay? And then, you know, you can skin it all up. I like to tube the legs um, in the field. So I cut to the midpoint of the antlers, and then I cut the legs off at the knees. And then I cut mid-body mid around the ribs. So those are the only cuts I make. Straight up the back to between the antlers, straight around the middle of the body and the legs at the knees. Then I start skinning from where I brought it down at the spine all the way down to the legs and I skin around the legs and pull it right off the leg like you tube out the leg. And then you have the cut of course around the middle and you bring it all up to the neck and you cut the net at the top vertebrae which is right behind this little pointed bone on the back of the head that we have too, about an inch down. You cut there, you hit into the vertebrae and you easily remove the head. So now we're at that point. And so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna make a T here. So I'm gonna come over from this mid midpoint thing, this midpoint cut, and I'm making a T. So now I'm all the way up to the base of the horn. Now what I wanna do is find where the velvet, you know, or if your deer doesn't have velvet, you wouldn't have to worry about that. But I wanna divide the velvet and the hair. And I'm gonna cut straight down. I'm going to do this basically all, all the way around this deer. Be super careful with these replaceable blade knives. Uh, odds are I'll nick myself while I'm doing this. Uh, hopefully it's nothing bad. I've never cut myself super bad, knock on wood, but these things are so scary sharp. Any small mistake is literally could be an emergency in the field. Um, normally, this is, we, I, normally I do this in the bush. Um, doing this right now is a favor for Billy uh, just in the shop. But uh, anyway, be super careful with these. Um, so we're cutting, again, between the velvet and the fur, we're cutting straight down. And I might not go all the way around to start with. I may just kind of work in. But once you have this T and you've made that cut, see, it starts to come off. And as a rule of thumb, if, if you stay close to the bone, you're going to have a lot of flesh. You're going to have a lot of flesh on the, left on the cape if you stay close to the bone. But you are not going to mess up. If you get away from the bone and you cut through the cape too much, then that's when you sort of get in a little. Okay, now the ears. I'm going to show you a beginner way to do the ears. That just makes, makes it so you're not going to screw it up. Put your finger... Or your thumb or something in the ear so you know where it gets small and be sure like you know where your finger is right and just don't cut your finger off but see ultimately you want to cut the ear where the canal is small see how big the ear canal is there it's tiny right there you, you got that on film bill, bill? Mm -hmm. see it's small there so i know if, if you if i were to cut it way high you would see it when they mount it so when i cut it way back here where it's small it's no big deal 
and I keep going around the antler, remember, cutting between the velvet and the fur, and then I cut down, and it opens it right up. So I am now done with this side just that fast. So that side's completely done. See how it looks? So it's off. We took it off of the antler and this is all fur now. We have the ear removed. Now, when I said I'm slow, I'm, you know, I've done this for 20 years, but I only do it a few times a year. I'm not super slow, so that was actually, don't expect to do it that fast the first time you do it. But if my taxidermist were doing it, he'd have done it twice that fast. So, but speed, of course, is not important. Take your time. So we're going to do the exact same thing to the other side here, just staying close to the bone, coming up, getting in this crease here, or they, right at the base of the horn. You know, you're going to cut a little bit of hair follicles in there, but nothing, it's, that's not going to be a big deal. You know, like cutting a few, you, you, obviously you can't be perfect, but you want to be as perfect as you can. And you can see clearly what's velvet and what's hair. And I just slide my knife in there, get in between the two. Now this ear needs to come off. And that will make my job a lot easier. So I, I want to just stay close to the skull. And we're going to cut it where it's small. Right there. That was really, it's really small right there. Now, your taxidermist may say, man, there's a lot of, there's a lot of flesh on that thing. But they'll flesh it out. The important thing is that you preserve your cape because if you're in the back country, you know, I just I just got off of a 14-day Alaska Sitka blacktail hunt. 14 days backpacking, self-guided, do-it-yourself, self-sustained, got dropped off by a bush plane with our backpacks with 14 days worth of food. And I killed my buck on like the second day up there. The second day up there, so Obviously, I caped them out and all of that, and we actually had the pilot come in and pick up meat and cape uh, part of the way through, so we wouldn't, we wouldn't, uh, you know, we'd save the meat, of course. But, but that cape, had I left it on there for those days that we were waiting for the pilot, I may have lost my cape. So you guys see, now I'm done here, okay? See that? We've got everything brought down to this point. And we're just going to keep skinning down. Just like you're skinning an animal, just, you know, you can even, you know, in general, like, stay closer to the bone, you know, you can leave more flesh on when you're doing this than when you're doing the rest of it because, because you want to uh, make sure you don't mess it up. Um, you know, you can get into turning your ears and all that stuff. I, I don't, I'm not going to show how to do that today. Um, Okay, now we're approaching the eyes. And the eyes are another critical spot. Obviously, we need to be very careful of the eye. So what I do, show this right here. I put my finger in the eye socket, okay? And then I, I know where the, I can feel the bone. It's right, there's my fingers right there. I can feel my finger. So I cut down, I'm right next to my finger. And I know the eye socket's safe because my finger is safe. So these are the beginner tips I'm talking about. So I, I cut downwards and see there's the eye socket hole and I just keep cutting around it. Now we don't want to get too crazy here. We're just going to keep cutting around it. But we remember that we have a tear duct below the eye. So we're just going to do the top half of the eye to start. And see how, here's my finger. You can see my finger moving in there. Okay, now I know it's safe. And so now I'm going to, I'm way deep in the eye socket. So now I can cut through and I'll show you the part we are trying to save here in a minute. But when you get all this, like see right here, this is what we're trying to see. And we saved all this extra too. If we were to cut this part, there'd be no deer to mount. So you can see that's saved there. Billy got 
a lot of dirt on his hide there. I don't want to show that. That's not my work right there. Hey, Billy, I'm just teasing you, buddy. Sorry. It's all good. Okay, so now I'm going to keep cutting down, right? And But I got to be careful of this tear duct. I do not want... You guys know what I'm talking about. Right below the deer's eye, there's that indentation. Um, I call it a tear duct. I'm pretty sure that's what it is. I mean, everybody calls it that. But but we're going to... As we get down here, I don't want to get into this tear duct. So I'm, I'm cutting... See, I'm cutting straight toward the bone. Straight toward the bone. Straight toward the bone, okay? And now I'm going to stay against the bone inside. I can feel my fingers in the tear duct. Just, you know, my fingers in the tear duct. So I know where it is because I don't want to cut my finger, right? And my brain knows where my finger is, even though it's on the other side of that, of that uh, skin. And so I'm going to start burrowing. See, I'm going into this tear duct. There's a big hole in the bone here, and we're going to skin out. We're going to skin out the bone. See, my knife's going way down in that hole. And I'm staying on the bone. See, I got a tiny, tiny nick there, but that's not a big deal. That tiny nick the taxidermist won't, I mean, it won't even be, need to be fixed. It'll just all get glued together. I'm getting a little more space here. See, I'm kind of fighting. The hide is kind of tight. So you have to bring the hide down as you go. So see, when I do this, it just gives me more hide to work with when I'm working around the eyes. So you have to bring it all together, step by step. I'm trying to go a little bit fast here just to just so you guys aren't watching this forever. Um, but I don't, I don't want to go so fast I make mistakes, but I might make just a mistake or two if I'm, you know, hustling. But it's not anything that can't be fixed. So now I've got plenty of room here, and this tear duct is free right here. And it's kind of like a, a sack. Look at that, Billy, Billy, right there. See this sack right here? That's what the tear duct looks like when it comes out. So we're going to grab that. Now look, see that? We got that tear duct completely out. See that? See the hole there? This sack used to be in that hole, and that is the tear duct. Okay? So now, bring this down, and we're going to work on that other eye. But see, I like to bring this down a little because the other eye is going to be much easier because we have more room, more flexible um, so look, you can see the top of the eye socket. Look, put, you can put your finger in there if you want, which is a really good idea. I mean, I know where the eye socket is. I've done this enough, so I'm just going to cut down on top of the eye socket. You know, sometimes I just like my finger in there, though. I don't think a taxidermist would do that. You know, they're, they're so good at this, but putting your finger in the eye socket, you really know where you are. So I've got this pulled way out now. I can feel that my eyelid is very safe, so now I'm going to cut across it down and down toward the tear duct but remember I'm gonna be careful here and I'm gonna cut only to the front of this and then I'm going to put my finger in the tear duct and I'm gonna start going down along the bone just gotta feel your way around here a little bit because you're not looking at the tear duct from the right side, so you don't know where it is, but you know there's a hole here somewhere. You gotta find that hole, and you gotta get that sort of sack thing out of that hole.
Now, I'm sure there will be people saying, hey, you're doing something wrong, or whatever. And I'm cool with that. You know, I probably am doing something wrong. I'm sure there are taxidermists that will say, hey, it would be better to do it this way. And actually, if anybody has any pointers and better ways to do it, I invite your comments below. Because, um, you know, we can always all learn. Um, I do know what I'm doing here works. So you can feel confident doing this this way if you don't know another way. But I'm sure we'll learn from some comments below too. And uh, it could be very, very instructive for everybody, including me. Okay, so we got through that tear duct. And now, going down, down to the mouth. Now, I do something on the mouth that's a little bit less conventional. I think it just saves me work later is I like to come in here and cut right above as low as you can toward like where the teeth would be. And I clear that out so that, so I already have this cut and I know I can see what I'm cutting from this end. And on this nose here, I'm going to stay as low as I can stay against the bone. See this, look. See, I'm gonna cut into the nose here as low as I can. It's only cartilage here so you can cut you can cut that cartilage. Now when you start to hit bone, you're going to have to come up and follow the bone. But see, I've taken a lot of cartilage off. So this has helped me get like a lot of the work done that I'm going to have to face later if I'm coming from the other side. But I feel like I got to see it better when I do it from this side. A guide taught me this years ago. Is to, you know, do the mouth from the inside first. Then when you're cutting... When you're skinning down, after you've done your eyes, and you're skinning down, you have very little work left because the mouth has already been done and there's no guesswork on where you're going. So see, look at this. I'm skinning this jaw, this bottom jaw, all the way back. Okay. Now we're going to go back to here and we're going to meet up with all that. Put my hand in, in the back here so I know where it is. You know, um, I go on some guided hunts, you know, and, and you'll have some really good guides that can do this stuff for you sometimes. And, Whatever, sometimes I let them. A lot of times I just like to do it on my own because I know it'll be done right. But I do a lot of self-guided stuff, a ton of DIY stuff. And uh, in Alaska and in, in the lower 48. Um, so knowing how to do this is... So I hear you come to the end of the bone where you can't cut. The first place you can cut through the cartilage, you cut down. So you want to leave as much cartilage in there as you can, in my opinion. Uh, because again, you know, it's like the ear. If you see up into the nose and it disappears, well, they, don't, they can't work with that, you know? But anyway, like I was saying, the, uh, when you're doing a lot of DIY stuff and you're hunting animals, you know, that, that you're going to want to do taxidermy on, then you need to know how to do this. Like, there's, nobody's going to do it for you back there. So, and unless you can just always just leave whenever you want to leave and get it to your taxidermist, well, maybe, yeah. But like I said, second day of a 14-day hunt... You know, I was in this position just this last week. Not that, I mean, I'm in that position multiple times a year, but okay, that's it. So here we have it, a mule deer cape. There's the uh, cape dot. That's your European mount right there. And here, this is what it looks like when it's done. And so for those of you who don't know, what happens is they turn this into leather. They tan it just like leather. Um, the leather's on the inside, they leave the fur on the outside, so it's like a fur on tanning. They tan it into leather, and then the taxidermist has a form that's made out of foam, and the leather is glued to the foam. So if you look at all these animals, inside here is foam. And all this is is cured leather over the top of the foam. When we did this animal, we did a life size, so we took the entire cape. This was a head mount similar to what we just did here, and that's exactly how I did this one. So. That's how you cape an animal. Hopefully it's been educational. Hopefully it didn't gross anybody out. You know, I mean, it's just part of it. I, I, you know, I'm sure this video will get censored or whatever. 
Um, but hopefully it's, it's been beneficial for people. Um, it was, I appreciate the people who first taught me to do this 25 years ago. It's made a big difference for me. Um, that's it. Thanks.